Endurance copy. So there's our first view of Dragon Endurance making its re-entry to planet Earth. Six months in space. And this is the first time that these uh, crew members have been in Earth's atmosphere in that time. Um, as you just heard, we're standing by for drogue parachute deploy, so those two drogue chutes. The crew members will probably feel a little bit of a jolt as those deploy, uh, but that's why they are strapped into their seats safely, those custom-fitted seats. Um, and after the drogues deploy, it'll slow the capsule to about 350 miles per hour before we see the four main parachutes deploy and slow it down to about 15 uh, at the point it'll splash down in the ocean off the coast of Tampa. Yeah, now right now, um, or it may have already happened, the seats that the crew members are in um, actually automatically rotate to 26, automatically rotate 26 degrees in order to keep the crew within the acceptable G limits for entry and landing. Um, as I mentioned before, if we didn't have these drogue chutes, which um, they deploy around 18,000 feet, so we're expecting to see those pop out any moment, um, without those drogue chutes, we would have to make Dragon SpaceX, brace for drogue window. So without these drogue chutes, uh, we'd have to make the main parachutes three times stronger and heavier. Expecting those drogues to deploy any moment. And of course, those drugs deploy automatically, but if, uh, if needed, the crew can deploy them manually. They have a hard line button in the capsule. It's beneath their uh, display where they monitor the mission. And of course, after the drogue chutes deploy, we'll see those main parachutes, which help to further decelerate the vehicle and allow it to make a soft landing there in the Gulf of Mexico. Great image of those drogues deploying. All right, looks like we have two healthy drogues there. And then George is visual on two drogues. Copy, we see the same. Descent rate nominal. And if you noticed, as those drogues were deploying, Copy, no, the drugs didn't open up to that full size you saw all the way at first. It's called reefing. Uh, they open up more slowly so that it's not as big of a jolt to the capsule and to the parachute system. And again, these will help slow the capsule to 350 miles per hour, which still seems fast, but compared to 17,500. There we can see the deployment of those main parachutes. The vehicle's velocity is about 119 miles per hour. Yeah, SpaceX Dragon, we see four chutes, and we could distinctly feel the two disc reefs. It looks like final descent reefs. Yeah, that reefing action that you just mentioned uh, playing out right in front of us. And Raja, we see the same. Excellent views here. Four main parachutes. These are the uh, last big physical change we'll see for Dragon as it continues its descent. Uh, it will slow the capsule down to about 15 miles per hour before splashing down. And teams are in position. They're, they're uh, moving their way closer to where the Dragon will splash down. Again, we'll have some fast boats that will um, approach the capsule first, ensure it's safe for the recovery ship to approach. And within an hour of these crew members splashing down on Earth, we expect to see them uh, getting out of the meters. Copy 800. Now, for those that might not be familiar uh, with Dragon itself over the lifespan of the Dragon program, we've had great success with um, water landing, which is what we are attempting today. Um, we've had uh, with uh, 25 su successful splashdowns. Um, and there. Copy 600. And we do that water landing uh, because it's simpler, uh, therefore more reliable, provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. Um, now, we did have to make how, we did have to learn how to make Dragon waterproof, um, but once you do that, it's very much a rinse, review, reuse type process. And splashing down is um, not necessarily a new technique. 400 meters. Copy, 400. 
Only 400 meters, so getting getting closer and closer back to planet Earth. Um, but splashing down is also how the Apollo astronauts return to Earth. Absolutely. So this capsule is um, not dissimilar to to uh, this design works very well, I should say. Uh, the capsule design when it comes to ablating heat as well as protecting crew members. And a very smooth ride home so far for our astronauts. 200 meters bracing. Copy, 200 and bracing. The teams are about three nautical miles away from the splashdown site, so um, it's going to take them a little bit of time to get there in terms of the large vessel, but there is a fast boat, as we call it, um, that will be able to get to the capsule very, very quickly, as we will see here in just a couple of moments. Once again. All right, as you can see there on your screen. Dragon Endurance during Endurance three. Week. Copy, we see the same and main attack. Crew 3 crew has splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Florida. So right now, Dragon is On behalf of the entire SpaceX team, welcome home. Willkommen auf der Erde. It's been an absolute honor to support you on your mission, Endurance crew, and thanks for flying SpaceX. Thanks, Sarah. We're glad to be back. Thanks for letting us take uh, Endurance on a shakedown cruise. Looking forward to watching many more flights of Endurance in the future. That was a, a great ride uh, and enjoyed working with the NASA and SpaceX team. So thanks for getting us to the space station and back safely. Appreciate the words, Roger. As you can see on your screen, we have that visual confirmation and verbal confirmation for splashdown of the Dragon spacecraft. Dragon Endurance has returned home and NASA astronauts Raja, Tom, Kayla, and Matias are back on Earth after a 23 and a half hour return journey from space. Now, as I mentioned before, the SpaceX recovery ship and team has been waiting for Dragon splashdown and they will now make their way to the splashdown location. And that splashdown came at 9.40. And SpaceX Endurance feels like we're in stable one. Copy that, and we see the same. Copy and confirm we're go then to Bravo.2 to raise the badges. And you have a go for raising visors. Again, splashdown coming at 9.43 p.m. Pacific time. That's 12.43 a.m. on May the 6th in Eastern time, where the crew has splashed down. Uh, stable one, which you just heard the core call to the crew, means that the vehicle is upright. They've received the go to raise their visors, and they're now waiting for those boats to approach and uh, help pull the capsule um, up to the recovery ship once it arrives. So the teams have been ready and waiting. They're about three nautical miles away. So it takes around 30 minutes to make their way to Raja, Tom, Kayla, and Matias inside Dragon. Now, right after splashdown, um, Dragon actually cuts its parachute lines. Um, that is help, that's to make sure that the Dragon capsule isn't pulled in the water if there is a little bit of wind, um, if the parachutes were to pick up some of that wind. So Dragon immediately cut those parachute lines. The teams will attempt to recover them uh, from the water. Um, the other thing uh, that Dragon does is it intakes a tiny bit of that um, ocean water intentionally to help stabilize uh, the capsules. So there's a couple of pumps at the bottom that basically flow a tiny bit of that ocean water into designated balloons, basically, um, to help stabilize the capsule. That allows for the recovery team uh, to make a safer recovery and also allows the crew to bob around a little bit less while they're in the water waiting. But we can see there that the seas are really fair. Um, as we heard um, a little while ago, the, the last reading that we had were half foot waves, and that looks to be relatively true now. Yes, I don't know if you could ask for better weather. Uh, just to look ahead at some of the things that are coming. Dragon SpaceX, come check over the boat link. Endurance has you loud and clear. 
Copy, Tom. Looking ahead, um, after the splashdown, Mission Control Hawthorne can give the go for safe, appro safe approach. Uh, and then the approach boats that we've talked about will begin inspections. They're checking for hypergalls, which are those um, noxious fumes that can come off the vehicle. Um, after those ordnance and hypergall checks are complete, um, we will see Dragon be rigged up, which means it'll be ready for pickup once the recovery ship arrives. arrives. So that usually happens again about 30 minutes after splashdown. Uh, and then they'll begin to lift Dragon onto the deck. That takes just a couple of minutes. And once they have lifted Dragon into the nest and pulled it toward the um, recovery platform, we will see the hatch open and our crew three astronauts take their first breath of fresh earth air yeah. for the first time in six months. Yeah, once that side hatch is opened, uh, that's the first time it's been opened since liftoff, uh, since launch day. Of course, the crew uses the forward hatch, which is located under the nose cone at the very top of the capsule. Um, they use that forward hatch to get in and out of the space station, but it's that side hatch that is utilized for ingress and egress or to get in and out of the capsule while it's on Earth. So yeah, when that side hatch opens, it's the first time it's been open since they launched in November. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. You can expect personnel alongside in approximately one minute. And very happy to see personnel alongside in about a minute. All right, those fast boats have gotten the go to move toward the vehicle. Yeah, so we're now excitedly awaiting the recovery of our Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronauts Raja, Tom, Kayla, and Matthias inside. Dragon has already autonomously completed several steps to safe itself following splashdown. Um, as you can see there, it is patiently waiting uh, in the water for that recovery team. Uh, now, for those of you just joining us, the mission has gone really smoothly so far. Um, Dragon su successfully uh, splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Tampa um, just a little bit ago. And as you just heard, we got the OK from the teams to begin the approach. Yes, yeah, so that splashdown coming at 9.43 p.m. Pacific. Uh, but approximately 23 and a half hours ago, Dragon autonomously undocked from the space station. And a good look there at those fast boats. Dragon SpaceX, request permission to come on board via display camera view only. Yep, uh, you guys are welcome on board. Copy that and work. Now the crew right now are still in their seats. This is similar to when you arrive on an airplane, you have landed on the tarmac, but you're not at the gate yet. You don't yep. want to take off those seatbelts just yet. Uh, so they are allowing the teams here in Hawthorne to take a look inside the vehicle as these fast boats approach. Um, but just a look back at yesterday, we saw them undock from the space station and complete a series of departure burns. They jettisoned the truck. Yeah, SpaceX Endurance, we've got tally on recovery lights. And uh, only one complaint is these water bottles are super heavy. <laughs> Copy that, Raja. We'll work on it. <laughs> Raj, of course, making a gravity joke there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the first time in uh, six months, everything has a little more weight to it <laughs> now that they're back in 1G on Earth. Uh, but today we saw them jettison that trunk se section and perform the final burn, that deorbit burn, uh, very shortly ago to place them on the trajectory we had them toward the Gulf of Mexico. They successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, uh, made it through that entry interface, which we had that loss of calm, uh, as we expected, and then regained shortly after. And then the deployment of the parachutes, which slowed the spacecraft down to a gentle splashdown. We had amazing views of that tonight. And so we're now following the final part of Raja, Tom, Kayla, and Matthias' journey as Dragon is lifted out of the water and placed on the recovery boat. Not there quite yet, but uh, <laughs> sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, as I said before, the, upon detection of landing, Dragon automatically releases the main parachutes to prevent wind from pulling on the spacecraft. Dragon then autonomously safes any pyrotechnics that are still present on the vehicle and uh, may automatically perform additional minor system reconfigurations. Uh, as Leah mentioned, the astronauts remain, remain seated in, in their seats and they keep their suits on, uh, but the onboard air conditioning keeps the temperatures 
is in check inside the spacecraft, nice and cool, uh, and the communication systems on board remain powered so the crew can continue to communicate and make uh, funny jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is a view inside the capsule. So um, you can see Raja there on the left has taken off his gloves, still has his suits on, and has been able to raise his visor. Um, this is their first time back on Earth in six months, and they're just still monitoring the area around them. We heard them say that they had sights on one of those fast boats. Uh, SpaceX has two fast boats in the recovery fleet, and they've moved quickly to the splashdown point. They are being followed tonight by Shannon, the main recovery vessel named after after Shannon Walker, NASA astronaut. And that will move uh, into the position upwind of the spacecraft. So here's a good picture of those two fast boats. They both have very specific roles. The first approach is focused on immediate safety inspection of the capsule integrity and checking for any presence of those hypergolic propellant vapors, making sure it's safe for Shannon the recovery boat to approach the Dragon spacecraft. So once the capsule is cleared for full approach, the team begins rigging the capsule for water recovery by the recovery ship. Meanwhile, the second fast boat, which you can see in the background, is responsible for parachute recovery, and it also serves as a redundant boat to the first. We love having a backup for everything. Mm -hmm. And we'll also see a team member on a jet ski helping to gather up the now detached parachutes.